Hi there. Today we're going to be covering how to install a Pterodactyl panel on Ubuntu 2004. We're not going to be using a conventional installation method. We're going to be using an installation script that is publicly available on GitHub. We will have an additional guide on how to install using their official installation guide, but we're just going to be using the cheeky method, uh, which is nice, quick and easy. And all you have to do is follow prompts uh, in your SSH client and the job is done. It's nice and simple. Um, the link will be available in the description of the video, but it, if you're a Bitania client or you're accessing it from the Bitania website, in the support article underneath the video, you will also see the information and the commands needed or used in this video. So the Pterodactyl installer script is available on Ubuntu, Debian, and CentOS. Um, you have to be very careful as it will only work on certain versions. Generally, the last three revisions of any OS is perfectly fine. So Ubuntu 1804 to 2204, Debian 9 until 11, and CentOS 7 and 8. And the same goes for the wings. So all we're going to do is we're going to scroll down, and this is going to be our installation script that we are just going to put into SSH and run it. To start with, I in the past have experienced on certain VPS servers that when you are trying to use this script, Nginx does not install correctly. So to start with, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to install Nginx manually so that when it gets to the part of installing Nginx in the script, it's done for me automatically. However, you should not experience this issue. This could just be a localized issue. I'll just get install Nginx. Accept all of that. Okay. Now, once that is done, all we're going to do is just go over to our website just to make sure it's up. Yep. So I'm not going to be using a fully qualified domain name for the panel. Um, you obviously can use a subdomain or an actual just generic domain for your panel. For this instance, I'm just going to be using the IP just to make it easier for myself and just for an explanation purpose. So we're going to select the script. So you get the, a few options when you run this for the first time. So you can either install the panel, the wings, both at the same time or the canary versions. So we're going to install both. So we're going to type in two and then we're just going to start the process. So database name. So this is the database for the actual panel, not for the daemon itself. So we're just going to call it panel. Pterodactyl is the username. Enter for standard password. Localization is Europe slash London. However, if obviously you're in a different location or your daddy is located somewhere else, make sure you set it correctly. Uh, the provided email address. And again, and the username, first name, last name, and the password, and the fully qualified domain name because we're obviously not going to be using one. We're just going to be using RIP. Oh, that didn't go very well, did it? Okay, it's not going to let me do that. Five four point six point one three six point one. One four, and then we're just going to allow it to configure the UFW for us, and we're going to start the process. This generally doesn't take too long, and I found that this is a lot quicker and easier than following the guide itself that they provide. Obviously, there's a lot of changes that you need to make and everything. With this, it just it automates that entire process for you, and you're solely focusing on getting this online as quickly as you possibly can. As I said, we will have uh, a different guide that will cover using their official installation method itself. This is just to make it easier for our customers and clients that just want to be done with this as soon as possible.
So it obviously wants to try and make a change to SSHD config. We're just going to keep our local version because we've already set up our SSH keys. So now that the panel is finished installing, we're going to work on installing the actual daemon of the pterodactyl panel. So we're just going to allow it to make modifications to the USW again. And we're not going to be covering in this video how to set up databases um, so that you can host databases on the pterodactyl panel. That will be in an additional guide. So for now, we're just going to hit no, because that can be set up later on without the need to do it in the installation process. Uh, we're not using HTTPS, so we're going to set no and we want to proceed with the installation. And there we go. So now that the panel is installed and the daemon is installed, what we can do is we can refresh our Nginx installation and we now have our Pterodactyl installation. So let's try and log in. And there we go. We're now logged into our Pterodactyl panel. So we'll head over to the admin section. Right now we have no nodes and no servers set up. Um, in an additional guide, we will be covering the actual installation of a Rust server and another guide after that, which is a lot smaller and not part of the series, is how to install plugins for Rust servers. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the verification that we need from the installation. There's a few adjustments that we need to make. So right here, we need to actually start the wings process. But before we do that, let's head back to the panel and create a location. So we'll call this LON for London. And we'll head over to nodes, create new nodes, and we'll call it... Uh, VPS because this is the VPS server's uh, daemon. So memory over allocation is none. Total disk space over allocation is none. So here, what you're setting is you're setting the amount of um, memory in megabytes, whether it is allowed to go over that percentage, and the same for your disk space. So You need to make sure that you're very accurate with this because obviously if you go over, it will stop working. Your servers will crash. Um, generally, if you're hosting this on a quite small server, you want to make sure that you're giving it less memory than what you actually have to make sure that it you know, does not go over the allocation required to even run the panel or the daemon. So for this instance, I'm just going to bring that down to 14 and our disk space is fine um, because I have plenty of disk space to utilize. So we have our daemon port on our SFTP port. We can confirm whether they are set up on UFW by doing UFW space status. As we can see, they are now there as well. Our FQDN is going to be our IP once again. And 
this node is going to be public we are not going to be using SSL so we're going to change that to HTTP connection we are not behind a proxy either now all we're going to do is we're going to hit create node we're going to go to configuration and we're going to copy this detail here head back over to our SSH client so we're going to nano slash etc slash pterodactyl slash config dot yml and that information is right there as well so that you don't need to remember it off by heart and all we're going to do paste in our information and control x y to hit confirm and then enter to save we've made now one configuration change and we're on to the next one so the website that i'm on right now when you are done with the installation process for the wings it will give you the url that you can go to to see the changes that you need to make for the actual wings to start working itself um, and it also tells you the file that you need to edit as well. So nano slash ECTC slash system D slash system slash wing tab to finish it off. And we're just going to remove what's in there because there is additional things that need to be added. So let's get rid of these and then add our one in. And then we'll save it. And all we're going to do, copy the command to start wings. There we go. And now if we head back over to node, our node is now active and on. So if I system CTL stop wings and then refresh here, our wings session is no longer online. So the node cannot be connected to bring it back online, refresh. And now we're back online. And that is how you set up the node system. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to let us know. You can reach out to Bitania via a support ticket on our Discord or on our live chat. The next additional guide will be covering how to set up a Rust server using your newly installed Pterodactyl panel. And it's very simple, very straightforward and easy to understand. Thank you very much. Have a good day.